Hello and welcome to the fourth part in the AWS S3 command line interface course from How to Code Well. My name is Peter Fisher and in today's tutorial we're going to be focusing on how we can filter out certain files from being uploaded to our S3 buckets. So today we're going to be playing around with a lot of arguments in our command line. And what I've done is I've included all the commands and their arguments and an explanation as to what they do in the link provided in the show notes. So if you want to read what I'm doing as I'm doing it, and if you want to take that away with you, then please check out the show notes below for that link. So let's go straight into the terminal. I'm going to do an LS on my local machine here. We can see that we have the assets folder. Let's just do an LS of assets to see its contents. And we have the temp.jpg, temp.log file, and temp.txt file. Let's first of all upload the whole thing. And then after that, I'm going to talk about and demonstrate how we can actually filter out certain files from being uploaded. So as we did before, let's do AWS and then S3CP passing in the source, which in this case is assets, and the destination, in this case is S3 colon forward slash forward slash, and then the bucket name. My bucket name is how to code uh, well, so like so, how to code well, forward slash, or hyphen I should say, test. Now this bucket name is going to be totally different from the buckets that you're playing with, so don't worry too much about that, they need to be unique. I'm gonna have forward slash, I'm gonna have assets, because I would like it to be in an assets object, and I'm also going to supply the hyphen hyphen recursive flag. Like so because we want to copy everything up, including the directory itself. Press enter here, and we should be able to see the output. Here we, we can see that we've uploaded three things. So we've uploaded temp.txt, temp.log, temp.jpg, and they've all gone inside assets, like so. So let's go and take a look at those. Let's do an AWS LS, or sorry, S3, I should say, and then LS and take a look at what's inside there. Just copy that like so. Remember that you need to have a forward slash because you want to see the actual contents of that. Press enter and we should see both or all of the files that we've got. Now let's say for example, you want to filter out what files are being uploaded. So in this case, we're going to filter out everything that isn't a .jpg or a .txt. So we don't want to upload the .log file. What we do is we can supply an argument, which is exclude. So we can actually exclude certain patterns from the upload process. So let's do AWS. In fact, let's just go up on the command line to here, because that is copying the assets again. And this time we want to do hyphen hyphen exclude. Whoops, like so. Put in a space and now we can actually put in a pattern of what files we don't want to include with our CP command. In this case, we're going to do asterisk and then dot, and then I said dot log. So we're going to upload all of the assets, excluding anything with the extension of Dot log. So press enter and we should see that we only have two outputs here. We've uploaded the JPEG file and we've uploaded the TXT file. Now, of course, we've already uploaded this before. So what we're doing is we're overwriting what is currently in the bucket. Now we can also exclude more than one thing. And if we were to do that, we could use the hyphen hyphen exclude again, or we could change the pattern if we wished as well as excluding files by doing a pattern, you can also include files by doing a pattern. And that might sound a little bit weird. Why would you mix include and exclude together? Surely one supersedes the other. Well, let's just go ahead and demonstrate that now because it will become clearer once I've done it. Let's say, for example, we want to include all the temp files, but exclude all the .log files. So let's do, Let's go up again. Let's do exclude.log, which we've, we've done. 
also put in a space and then hyphen hyphen include and then temp as that is what we wish to include. So I'm just going to do temp and then temp star like so. So you would think that perhaps we're excluding the log files, but we're including all the temp files. Now by pressing enter, what we've done is we've included all of the files, even though we've asked it to exclude the .log file. The reason being is that it takes the first argument as president over the other subsequent arguments, okay? So in order to change that, in order for that to actually work, the exclude actually working, what we need to do is change the order of these arguments. Let's just run that again. Let's go up on here. And instead of the include here, let's just remove that. We're going to put in the include before the exclude. So let's do hyphen hyphen include space and then temp and then asterisk like so. So we're saying include everything that has temp, but exclude everything that has dot log. Let's press enter here and we should only see two outputs which we've got. So it's including everything that is temp, but excluding everything that ends with an extension of dot log. Now this is very useful if you've got a very mixed set of um, files in your directory that you wish to upload to the S3 object storage. Again, all of these commands, all of these arguments are in the link in the show notes below. So do check that out. In the next video, we're going to be focusing on how we can download files that we've actually put into the S3 bucket. Perhaps you're working on a project where you've been shown or given access to an S3 bucket. You need to download those files to your local machine. Maybe it's a backup of something. Maybe it's a backup of a database or just a backup of, a, of several assets. That is what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. If you've got any questions, please let me know. Thanks ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again next time. Cheers. Bye.